Leave it to you to charm somebody into letting you hold the firearms. All right, welcome back. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. Yep. From what I read online, mm -hmm. people say that this is one of the best places uh, for memorabilia and, and Civil the history, War. Yeah, history. Yeah. So, um, we're going to see, I guess. I mean, it's kind of a, it looks like just a house. I don't know. Let me see if I can figure this thing out. There, just a house there. And then there's another one next door that's, um, I think, part of it. Yep. Yeah. That or they got a sign on there that says, don't come here. The museum's <laughs> over there. But this is pretty no, I'm pretty sure they're is. connected. So, um, yeah, we're going to go in here and check it out. See what all they have. Got any, uh, got any anything else? No. Nope. You got another nope. Hey, it's free. It's free donations are uh, accepted. Uh, accepted. I'm pretty sure this is this is going to have more history in one place than we've ever seen. Hopefully, fingers it's, crossed. Hey, the reviews were raving on this. I mean, we uh, we we drove. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's probably about an hour and a half yeah. or so from the house. It's really not that bad. Yeah, it's really. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've certainly drove further for less. <laughs> oh, so. definitely. So, and so far, this looks like a really cool town. It's a really nice town, and I know as soon as we get home, we're going to find out there was like <laughs> something within a half a mile of here that we, that really we need to stop by and needed check. to see. So we're going to be back. Yeah. So uh, I've never been downtown in Greenville. No, neither have I. I've been through it. Um, I just rode through it. Yeah. And uh, we're we're in the historic district. Yes. So um, we're, we're going to go check yeah, this out. Check it out. It's Crenshaw Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> the OG Crenshaw the OG. Mafia. The OG. The OG from 18 something. It's 12 pound brass Napoleon. A favorite of the Confederate artillery was constructed by Charles Crenshaw Jr., Charlie, co founder of the Southern Guns of Thunder. The barrel weighs 1,200 pounds. Wow. And uh, 57 inch wheels on it, 250 pounds per wheel. Dang. 1,800 yards. Total weight on it is 2,300 pounds. And it only shot a two and a half pound, oh, of the load, I'm sorry, was a two and a half pounds of black powder. Hmm. That's a lot. That is a lot. So you could shoot all these here. Solid shot, mm -hmm. exploding shell, expanding. Oh, wow. Chase shot, great, great shot. shot, 27 rounds of iron balls. Damn. That's a lot of balls. Uh, that's a lot of balls. <laughs> uh, oh, and they had uh, lead and clay balls and double canister, two of the canister rounds at once. Oh, wow, this is authentic too. It's not a replica. This is authentic. Yeah, a lot of times these are replicas. You're a replica. I'm as authentic as authentic gets. <laughs> Look at that beautiful Camilla bush. Yeah, I know. I want one of them. Let's see if I can smell it. Not all of them smell. I know. Two together. That one does not. It's actually three. Peach. White. Pink. So they're different varieties. Look at this one. No, none of them smell. No, I couldn't smell that. They sure are pretty. Very handsome. 
He's not really that handsome. <laughs> Some of this stuff's really neat. Him books. I just bought a hymn book from a uh, estate sale. Hadn't even had a chance to look in it. It's crazy. Did not know that. So this was the bill, playbill, that night. teacher Miss Chenault she talked about the Civil War like she had literally lived it Indian Treaty Gorget recovered inside of a wall in an old home in Washington Georgia a little miniature uh, Looks like a mother of pearl Bible. Right there. He's killed in action at Chickamauga. The tallest man in the Confederate Army, Henry Clay Thruston. Wow, how tall was he? He was seven foot seven and a half inches. In a time when the average man was five foot six. Wow. Yeah. Made in 1856. Yeah. It, and it had a carbine barrel that went on it and a shotgun barrel. And there's shotgun shells over there and bullets over here. Mm. This was bought in Belgium and the guy that bought it was a doctor here in town. And he'd give it to us. Oh. And oh, wow. He had to keep it a year, but <laughs> he got his tax deduction. Yep. Y'all have a nice collection. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, we have about 146 or seven guns in here. That's this cool. is a 800-pound piano made in Boston, Massachusetts on Washington Street. And see, of course, this piano was a uh, six-octave piano. And it's had regular pianos, 88 octaves, 88 keys, I mean. This one's only got 73 keys. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. See the innards of it. Yeah, we had to have that rebuilt. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it plays. It Does plays it? an organ, too. It's got an organ in it. And a bell. Really? Yeah.
said, what, the Leroy? And she said, you call it Leroy. We call it Leroy, which means the king. <laughs> and she said, yeah, my family was here during the war. Oh, okay. And she said, we went back to Paris because they took our farms from us, the Yankees did. Uh, she says, well, we moved back to Paris, and her husband says, yeah. And says, I want to, everybody in our community is from over here. We all settled in that one section of Paris. Really? And all our businesses are there. And he says, every year, I, we all get together and shut the town down, and we go to, to Normandy. He said, I have a big farm up there with 85 horses. We have the Battle of Gettysburg every year. <laughs> wow. I said, do you ever win? <laughs> no. <laughs> here in Greenville, that building's still there. Oh, really? No windows in it. Big old building, so it's right on the river. Wow. If you go down there and look at it, they wanted to put windows in it. The Yankees, you know how they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the historical society said, nope, we ain't put no windows in that building. <laughs> but, but, but. They said, no buts. <laughs> Is it in use, the building? Yeah, they use it for different things, but mm -hmm. as long as you can use it without the windows, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, they made a skating ring out of it. They froze the really? and skated in there. But that is cool. But anyway, Thomas Cleghorn Gower run that factory, and he was a two-striper. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the war, he was the mayor of Greenville. Okay. You won't see that now. <laughs> if you ain't got a law degree or something else, you ain't getting right, that. Right, that's true. And uh, he also uh, owned uh, half the Greenville News. Okay. So that means he was literate. Right. <laughs> and my mother was 100, I mean, 99 years old when she died. And she said, we used to go over and see them really? when I was a little girl. Wow. We were still alive at that time. Yeah. That's see, pretty this neat. this was 1870. He was the mayor. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Thomas C. Gatton, a native of Maine, was known as a public-spirited leader and business entrepreneur. Never afraid of controversy, Gower ran for mayor in 1870 on the single issue of building a bridge over the Reedy River. Gower won the race and served as mayor of Greenville in 1870 to 1871. During his tenure, a wooden bridge was built across the Reedy River. Gower was the founder of Gower, Cox, and Markley Coach Factory, Greenville's very first industry. He owned a tannery, shoe factory, insurance agency, and hauling and warehouse business. Gower led the drive for public education and chaired the city's first school board. And up here you got the uh, Ordinance of Secession, where we seceded from the United right, States. Right, yes. Prominent ones was this one here, it says James Furman. Here's... Yeah. He's Furman University. Okay, yes. First president. so many men mm -hmm. that whenever the war was over they tried to there were so many of them dead there wasn't enough males indians to keep the to tribe. keep it going yep they, they literally they just some of them men probably had to make the supreme sacrifice and travel <laughs> yeah <laughs> they literally they wiped, out that, wiped out that, that tribe now they're still there i mean you know but their their population just recently i, I thought it would be a smooth bore i bet 
by the first in war, there were a lot of smooth boys on both sides. Mm -hmm. But after about a year, <laughs> you see my gun? I see it. Let me back it up. There you go. Leave it to you to charm somebody into letting you hold the firearms. Uh, you ain't got to do too much. <laughs> Really? In the basement of the state house. No way. They had no idea it was down there. They found a big chest full of Confederate They said it was 40 square foot of boxes that had been sitting there for years and years, dust all over them and everything. Lord. And they had cardboard even back then. One of them was full of Confederate money. Wow. And they sell it to us and we up it just a little bit and sell it in their gift shop. And Heck yeah. And, um, but I mean, that's the honest to goodness. I mean, it's not reproduction stuff. It's the real deal. And Come on, show you this. Fireplace. So they start their little collection. Oh, cool. This is a maternity dress. You turn it inside out and it's a brown dress. So you only had to have one dress for mm -hmm. six months of pregnancy. That's right. Just turn it around every week, wash it, right. turn it around. Yep. Right here is a, a wedding dress of the period. Now, when you were going to get married, there wasn't no white dresses yeah. over here right. until 1864. So women would order these silk dresses from England. They'd get married, and then they would wear it to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. They'd come out of church, and they'd unhook those sleeves under the lace and take them off when they got home and put an apron on with flaps that fell over the short part. Right. And they'd fix dinner, and the man didn't have to wait on to change clothes. According to kind of, mm -hmm. I had a little girl in here from yeah, Michigan, and oh her mother was a bleach blonde, dressed in nice, and mm -hmm. said he was dressed in nice, right. handsome fellow. So yeah. the girl was a pretty girl, girl about 16. Reach and I said, this is a courting account. You know what courting is? She gave me this together. look like, what? <laughs> and I said, that's that. dating, except you don't leave home. What? You know what they're like. I said, yeah, your father would bring this in the park. They got a nice man friend. Man friend. And depending on how much you liked it, as to how long the candle would be. If he didn't like it much, it'd be about this long when he burned it. Here he had to go. Right. If he liked it, he'd stay as long as he wants. <laughs> this was a tear catcher. And you'd I've heard of these. Tears in there. You let them run yep. down your cheek and fall in the thing. I You'd have to cry a lot. Right. But anyway, from the girl's mother says, you know women didn't do that. And I says, <laughs> Yes, some they women certainly loved, did. I said, some women loved their husbands. They did it. Mm -hmm. I said, the rest of them put spigot water in there. <laughs> and she said, why? I said, because you got to go out and pour it on his grave the next year and do right. a ceremony. And yep. she said, why? And I said, because your family's going to be there and his family. Everybody's going to be said, there. I said, if you didn't do it, you'd be a hussy sure That's enough. exactly right. You had to appropriately <laughs> grieve. Yeah. So I went to work for the Jews and Coyle when I was 19. And I'd go in at night, you know, and we'd get the paper cranked up and we'd run the paper off, you know, and I'd load papers on the truck and I'd drive a truck to Somerville. I'd be going up the road, you know, putting papers off on the left and papers off on the right at every stop. And we get up there and we had a right turn going into Sunbelt three miles. I didn't have to stop. I put that truck on the floor. I'd be doing 70 miles an hour right through the city. Police had come out behind me and turn on the red light. I'd stop in the middle of the street. He'd pull over, drive up beside me. I'd throw a paper in his window. He'd drive off and I'd drive off. <laughs> he got a paper every night. <laughs> he ain't going to give me a ticket because he wants his paper. Right. <laughs> and I didn't have to slow down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True story. Oh my True story. gosh. So he said this is the Hunley's almost display ready down in um, the Charleston. What? The what now? The Hunley. Oh. The, the, yeah, okay. He said it's almost display ready. All right. He said he was there when they pulled it up. No, uh. -uh. Yeah. That'd be cool to go see. All right. What'd you think? <laughs> it was awesome you know they are characters in there yeah we we had two great guys there that was so much information I, I, yeah I, I can't follow along that quick you know i don't know what they know and yeah but they if you wanted a question answered they could answer it they got you yeah but um they, they give us a lot of history um really really friendly a lot of stories a lot of stories a lot of stories, a lot of stories. 
they're local guys. They know yeah. all the local guys. Mm -hmm. Their family's family. Family goes way back. They 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 got the story. So it's a fun experience. Yes. And they have a God, huge collection of stuff. I mean, like all kinds of stuff. The glasses for syphilis patients back in the day. They had every. I mean, all kinds everything. of medical tools. I mean, it was really neat. By far, this is one of the best displays I've ever seen mm -hmm. of the Civil War. And just keep in mind, y'all, they are not funded by anybody no. other than the people that come in and give donations. Yep. The city won't fund them. Uh, the county don't fund them. They fund by people yeah, that fully... come in and give donations. Yep. They get, they keep getting bomb threats. Um, people are trying to break in. Yeah. They need to get their own building where they can put this stuff up where it won't get vandalized. So, was whether you. Whatever side you want to be on, whatever, um, you got to preserve. You got to preserve history. If, if we don't have this stuff, we can't show our kids where we're not to go and what not to do. Yep. You know, so they, I think it's important in that respect. They really have. And I got to hold a real 1800s musket. <laughs> so. All right. I'm not that special. Anybody could do that. So. <laughs> but. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Worth the drive. Well, well all right. right. Welcome, Welcome back. back. <laughs> we learned a few things this time. Number one, most important, you can't use mics and separate. <laughs> it kind of um, don't make a whole lot of sense of what I'm talking about sometimes. Uh, uh, just so. let me qualify all of it with this one statement. <laughs> this vlog was almost like starting over from the very first time that we ever <laughs> vlogged anything <clears throat> so you know it was a long day first of all but uh then we go to this place and i have the thought afterwards and i look at tommy and i'm like hey you wouldn't by happen chance giving your own commentary um <laughs> while you were in other rooms right and he was like a little bit, maybe. Maybe, and I'm like, dude, you didn't even have you didn't even have a camera. You weren't even video. So I, I had to cut this a lot because there was so much disembodied commentary uh, in there. So that's number one that we learned. Yeah. The number two, this place has anything and everything you want for either side of the Civil yeah, War. They for, had for, Union for stuff. They had. Southern stuff. I the, mean, the information these two guys had, and I don't know if they're the two that's always there, but these two guys knew their stuff. They knew about the war. They knew how things worked. I saw stuff in that museum that I have not seen at larger national funded no. places. No. That's you know, thing we need to remember that need to. Uh, they don't. They don't they they only work Spit on it out. they only work on donations so so but, I mean yeah, the work that they put into it for free is just amazing it's really definitely worth going it's yep. definitely worth going I think they're open seven days a week yes they are they're open seven days a week and uh, they got it all I, I want to talk about that Jesse James <laughs> picture yeah anywhere that you stand in that room Jesse James is like the gun follows you so this is Apparently an original. I don't know. He just told he pointed it out, and I was just looking. At uh, well, it. when he was telling me about it, somebody was talking over me in a different room <laughs> to somebody else. So I missed that part. But I can tell you a cool story. There's a reason why this guy's picture is at the bottom of a toilet. So back in the day, this guy, I'm not real clear on why he had access to people's houses. <laughs> I'm just going to step out on a limb and say that he was probably a door-to-door -door salesman. But for whatever reason, he had access to the houses. And the ladies of the town of Greenville started noticing that their silverware was turning up missing. And, you know, they got together, as ladies often do, and they put connected the dots and realized this guy was the culprit so whenever they would see him pass through downtown the ladies would go to the upstairs and they would dump their chamber pots on top of them and so all the ladies had a picture of this guy in their toilets i guess Which you know I to don't know why, but well i mean poop on you i guess yeah, i mean i don't know but 
They they did, and that's one of them. So there you go. There you go. You don't want your face at the bottom of the chamber pot. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this was a good. This this was a. It was a long trip. It was a good trip. Even I wasn't feeling all that great, but uh, nothing serious. I was fine. But we learned a lot. Though. We did learn a lot, and hopefully that'll communicate better in the next one. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a good effort. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Till next time, bye-bye. Stay, Stay spicy. spicy.